Amanda Pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Public comment? Okay. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the meeting? The minutes? And we've just done the calendar. So move that the approval of the consent agenda items is presented be approved. Second. And moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Okay. Election of board of directors. Scratch that. No. We're, we have to. We can't. We can't elect them. No, we're not going to. That that means, but that. That this that discussion is we need to announce publicly that the election, so the, um, the process for putting in your name or those candidates that want to run for the position, has, uh, it opens on Jan February 9th and that it closes um, Mar in, in March. March 20, no, that's the date of the meeting. March 21st, 2019, is the period in which the election, the candidates need to put their application in, in order to hold the election, which will occur on May 21st, 2019, for the effective date, July 1, 2019. So that's the part that we need to publicly announce. And that's what, this is not election within you as a board of uh, <coughs> positions. Okay. And it's two, three, and five positions? Yes. Yeah. You sent it to us. Who's We should have sent it to you, but this yeah. has to be made. Two, three, and five. Okay. Jane, Chuck, and Judy. Okay. Did you get a contact from the county? But we need to make sure that the public is aware of it. And that's what this is about. Do they have, they have to hand that to the county? To the county clerk. clerk. Yes. So, <clears throat> Charlie, for those, for in my case, I am not refiling. Do I need to publicly announce that? How do we want you? No. Just no. You don't have to do anything. No. All that happens is. I think there's two questions that I was not able to answer today. Uh, number one is, you don't have to do anything. It's whoever puts in an application. And then that becomes public information. Second question that I was asked to investigate, and I did not get an answer uh, clearly, is what happens if you don't have uh, candidates that have filled out an application? I have one. Oh. The board appoints. question was, what happens if there are write-ins? Then I have to get the most write-ins. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so if you had one write-in, it has to be three. three. When, when that's the most write-in. You have to get three write-ins. Yeah. Or for it to be a, to yeah. be a, a yeah. So, yeah. Failure, so, so failure, if you don't have three write-ins, I mean, Mickey Mouse three times right. might count, and that's unfortunately what some people think is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but if uh, barring that, then the board would have the ability to appoint right. someone to that position. Yeah. That person could be a board, former board member mm -hmm. to continue serving. Mm -hmm. Just say, <laughs> in the event <laughs> someone <laughs> did not. How many broken arms did that get? The board has to appoint somebody that's willing to serve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of fine details to these facts. <laughs> I think you have to put up well, 10 bucks or something. Or there is a 10 dollar board. Or get some signatures. Or the 27 or 25 signatures. Yeah. That's what the ruling is. So, 
all getting signed, we did need, uh, by statute, need to announce that this election is okay. So that is the purpose for this. Any questions on that part? No further outbursts, Cheryl? <laughs> Look at Jane. She <laughs> 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 <Jane> reached you. <laughs> okay, the financial report. Carol, I told okay. you. We're going to do 2017. <coughs> I'm just reading the agenda. Are we going to go by the agenda? It's not 2017, it's no, actually November 2018. It was a typographical error. We apologize for the update. Uh, oh, pay attention over here, <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> We're just glad it wasn't 2019. <laughs> okay. <coughs> here is November of 2018, which is part of our fiscal year 2019. Uh, we had 316 hospital patients, so, uh, a little bit more than October, um, pretty close to our average of three, uh, 320 right now, so not bad. Um, ancillary services continue to be very busy. Um, we had a good month, not maybe as good as October, but still a good month. Still year over year good growth, except home health, which is down a little bit, really not a big deal. Uh, this 25% has a lot to do with the fact that we've added out Zero's health planning into this number now. And I meant to fix that last time and I didn't, I forgot. So I, will, I think what we need to do is we need to add Altura's health clinic into last year's numbers so that we have kind of more of an apples to apples sort of um, comparison. So I've made a note on my desk. We need to do that. Okay. Our gross charges for the month of November were $3.183 million. Um, so it was a pretty good month. Uh, our average is 2.122, um, good increase over last year. Our collections on AR were struggling a bit. Um, we had in November collected $1.35 million. In December, we collected $1.44 million. Um, currently, uh, our average collections are down to $1.7 million, which is about as low as expenses 2015. So not, not good news. Um, our days in AR went up to um, 86 for November, and I think they're close to 90 for December. Um, uh, we were put on hold with Medicare as of December the 10th, I believe, because our cost report was filed late. Um, they said we'd be on hold for 20 to 30 days, so the 30 days ends next week. So we would anticipate a, a sizable jump from Medicare next week, I would think close to a million dollars. Um, we're also awaiting our cost report, the 371,000 is coming back for our cost report, which we received on March 9th of last year. So I would think it would be a fairly comparable this year, if not a week or two later. Um, so, do you want to say anything, Lisa? <coughs> I thought we were more than 1.3 for November, but I think that was a good But yes, because we start getting our Medicare payments, and they've been processing our, uh, processing our claims. We are just getting EOBs without the payments. Is the new program we put in helping at all, or is that <coughs> not? Uh, no, I think it is. And I'm starting a, pro a project to do some research to see if we get some better information from them. We have had a lot, I did have a lot of staffing issues for the last couple of months with people's husbands being ill until they were out or somebody, you know, we had a lot of absenteeism. I think plus I was short staffed, but we're fully staffed now and everybody's back, so I expect you to get better. <laughs> Um, our day's cash on hand did come up a little bit uh, to 81 in spite of our low collections because we got, uh, you know, over a million dollars in tax dollars in November. So that was uh, helpful for this. We're still not where we need to be and we won't be in January or December either. Um, I would anticipate when we get all of our Medicare money, we'll, but I still, we're going to be close. Uh, 
on more profit and loss for the month of November. Um, our net revenue was $2.5 million. It was a little, it was $82,000 below budget. Um, our, our wages were over budget. Our materials and services were over budget. So our expenses were over budget by $83,000. Our net loss for the month was $129,000, which was $157,000 below what we budgeted to be. Um, so then net operating revenue year to date, we are $700,000 below budget. Um, our salaries are $300,000 below budget benefits. And then materials, we are actually uh, over budget by 444. So our total expenses are $13.7 million and they are $80,000 over budget. This was non-operating revenue, we're doing a little bit better than anticipated, so our bottom line, we're at a loss of 236000 year to date, which is $373,000 below budget. Um, our balance sheet in November, our AR is getting high because of our low collections, and um, so we actually, the assets then are um, a little bit higher, not surprisingly, and then our debt went up because we borrowed 600000 on our bond in that month of November. So our debt went up and our liabilities went up. Otherwise, no significant change. Okay, questions? I am, Dawn, working on a, a look in kind of a more detailed comparison of last year to this year. I'll show it to you um, when we break, and I'll sit down and report to you guys within the next <coughs> few weeks just kind of chewing through some of these changes and differences because one of the main things, one significant thing I found when I took a quick look at it was that when you can, part of the reason why we're seeing a huge increase in expenses is because we've added, the wellness center has grown significantly. We added Alteris Health Clinic into our, our whole pot here. Uh, public Health we added into the pot. Uh, dietary is up quite a bit because we started feeding like a garden scale, which we hadn't really thought of. So, And then obviously we've, we've experienced significant expenses associated with our growth and expansion for our, both our plant and IT departments. Cheryl, when do we see then the offset from the county in regards to the wellness costs? The offset from the county? Yeah, because at least it was my understanding when we took over that program, it would be about a break even for us. It was not going to be a loss. It, so it is. A, it is. Yeah, that's, that's down. True. And so what I'm really saying here is, if you just you look purely at expenses, why have expenses grown so much? I'm not really talking about net. Okay. I'm just talking okay. about why did wages go up so much? Mm -hmm. Well, you added several people from public health. I mean, that's that's just a piece of it. But okay. that's. But you're right, we, well, I don't expect to lose money on wellness. Yes. Okay. okay. The same thing goes true for public health, that both were neutral. And the county assured us yes. that for public health, that um, the, the portion of the public or the general funds that they allocated to be spent for public health was based on what they had done in the past. If that isn't adequate, we would revisit that. We get, for public health, we get two sets of funds. There's money that comes from Oregon Health Authority, which is effective, that's the WIC program, that is the, um, the various specific programs that the state gets that pays the county to administer public health. It's actually dollars that come from the federal government. And then there are <clears throat> general funds from the county county was putting into the expenses for public health. We used a three-year running estimate in past years of what public health costs were as a benchmark for what we would use going forward. Because what we were afraid of is that the county would say, well, now that you've taken over, we'll instead of pay $75,000 or $100,000, we'll pay $25,000. So we said we'd like to have that as a three-year look back running average. But they also they said that would be fair. And they also said we would revisit the issue 
after several months, I had been into this for six months, if that was not enough to make sure that there was a fair uh, use of county funds for them. Okay? Am I making myself clear? Mm -hmm. Any insight to when we get an adjustment on our clinic payments? Dr. I still don't have a number from, um, I don't know where Whitley is as far as getting that number for us. I don't know why that's taking so long. I, I, before it's not taking that long when we've gotten like the new RFC rates and whatnot. So they're, they're coming soon, so we'll have a captive. <laughs> so what, is, what Eric has said to me is what's caused the a little bit longer delay than they expected. Because the approval went back into February of 2017. That means it impacts two fiscal years for us. This past fiscal year ending 2018, as well as fiscal year ending 2017. And it also impacts this cost report, but also last year's cost report. And so they're trying to make sure that, as they state, they hope they, they don't want to, if they don't have to, change the 2000 fiscal, uh, ending fiscal year 2017 cost report. That's why they're trying to make sure that it's. Cost reporting out. But I thought you were asking about the rates, what rates were we getting? Well, we're supposed to get some extra money. <coughs> That's right. Right. That's right. So, so it's a combination. Number one, we have to submit all the old claims. And you're working on that. Is that correct? We are. Have we gotten any claims paid yet? Not Medicare, but commercial we have. The commercial we have. Okay. So when do we think we'll get back, we will hear back from Medicare? We're having an issue right now with systems talking to each other. So we've updated all of our numbers on our side, and we've had the empty on and update them through the scrubber, but you're, you're talking about ID numbers, not yeah. numbers. Right. Like our MPI yeah. number or our RC numbers. So we're just trying to fix Did that. Did you get an answer today from them? No, not today. We didn't. So we'll have to, we're trying again tomorrow. It's really hard dealing with them because they're in the So Cheryl, I have a question. Going back to mental health and public health, <coughs> Why did I think we were going to see separate um, profit loss for those so that we could actually see something that shows what's happened in both of those entities? Well, you, you do have a separate, you, on, when you look at the detail, when you know. the detail. I, I didn't get it. It's in right. there? You did what? I, I didn't get it until sometime this afternoon, so I didn't have a chance to take it. The one I sent you today was, I actually didn't send the, I sent out the Lakeview Gardens and DAV Financials today. And the other ones I sent out Friday. Right. I know, and I have been. In, so that, but anyway, anyway, if you look at the detail, it, there is a department for public health, and there yeah. is a department for Alturas. And so the only difference between what you were seeing before and now is the benefits are marked down below. Oh. So when you look at those, and you look at those, the wages and the bottom line, you need to kind of think to yourself, Benefits cost about 30 percent. So, okay. yeah. um, and another thing that you have to think about is that um, because of the way that we are getting paid, remember that this year we got a bunch of money after the close of the year, and that's kind of got to be factored in, and that's going to be hard to predict. But that's part of the reason why we're going to run a little behind, is because you don't get some of the money until after the year ends. But you still ought to be able to get a pretty good idea yeah. of how how yeah. From both the, of those yes. are on the detail the finances yeah. look like with both of them. Yeah. An example of how it's hard to predict for us, and we're struggling with this to come up with a good way of giving you as good of an understanding of how we are doing. The EOCCO dollars, that is, so that's the Medicaid dollars, that's predominantly in um, mental health. I mean, it's almost exclusively mental health, as well as the clinic dollars. The calendar year just ended, and our metrics that we had to submit, our data, those are the metrics that relate to um, uh, 
the immunization room and the emergency room use. There's about a dozen of them. Um, how many kids came into the clinic to be seen by their primary care physician? All the things that we're getting monies to put on the health fairs and all the different programs to encourage people to come in and get care. We, found, we don't know exactly how well we have, will have done for calendar year 2018 until 90 days later when the claims have been submitted. Once it goes to Oregon Health Authority and they look at it and we use some scrubbing information, we find out in June if we met or how many of the metrics we met. And then we got our check based on how well the overall CCU did in August. Or was it September? <laughs> September. So it's nine months later, three months after, or two months after our fiscal year has closed. And we can't even say with any reasonable sense of accuracy whether we met it and how much money it's going to be. And that impacts clinics, it impacts the wellness center, and some of it impacts the public health. And it's because we, we can't predict it. We think we've done well, but it's based on what the Oregon Health Authority says as well. And that also is the problem that the auditors are having. And, and anybody that has a June 30 year end date has the same problem, all the districts. Because no one knows how to predict it. I wish it was an easier thing to do. Questions about that? Or suggestions of how we could? But it would look like that's a normal thing. So one year goes to the next, to the next, to the next. Like the carryover from last year would actually add to this year. And our carryover from this year won't get until next year. I kind of wish we would have done that. And our auditors decided that's not how we were going to do it. Is that right? Yeah. That makes it difficult. It does. It, does. it would have been, I, I totally agree with you. What's making it even more challenging is when we first started about 2011 or 12, when the CCO started doing the bonus, the bonus rates went from a million to now it's up to 60 for the entire CCO, these normal CCO. So $16 million spread for the 10 participants. That's a lot of money. And it has, what they've done is, the, remember the total amount to the CCO has gone up by 3.5% per year. It's capped at that amount. So the actual gross numbers haven't changed dramatically. What's changed is the amount of money that's at risk. So that we have greater and greater unknown. And what that risk means is, we may not get it. <coughs> so it makes it harder and harder. Okay. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> okay. Who's like? Okay, so here's Lakeview Gardens. Again, I think we need to go back and change this because what we did is we said there's not really been a 23% decrease. In truth, uh, we have about 16 patients in long-term care and about nine in assisted living. Um, as of December now, it's about 10 um, and 15, so 25 total. So right, right at our normal kind of number that we've been out for a few years. Um, and so that's not really a true de decrease. That's just because we took the out. So kind of an average month, not, not any big changes there. Um, there was about one less person in Lakeview Gardens, which you can kind of see a decline in revenue. It was down to 180, um, which our average is 190. So um, that left us with a little bit less revenue. So our net revenue for the month is 179. Um, the, good, uh, oh, the good news here is the contract labor went down a bit from 100 to 80, um, and so our total expenses were a little 
better. Our loss was 160,000, but we lost 737,000 dollars here. So what's our occupancy rate right now? 25 total, we can have 36. Yeah. Okay, and then um, Lake Medical Supply had a good month. Um, and as we discussed last month, we, we, uh, we are paying that um, consultant who did provide us with a lot of great information. Um, and we will, uh, I'll try to put together s some a report for you to tell you what we learned and what we're doing and what we're planning on doing um, because it is a significant amount of money but it, we're still kind of just we had a very small loss for the month um, but mainly because we're paying the consultants and I, I feel very strongly that that's going to be worth it in the end but a good month revenue wise it's really helping having a consultant now that we've been up and running and have some experience to look at our processes and find ways that we can improve. And what that also means is how we can grow the business. We've got some very good suggestions. And in a new startup business, that's a good, good process. essentially in front of you. It's a draft of our continuity operations plan. In 2017, CMS upped their requirements, and it's not a bad thing, but we have more requirements for um, preparedness now. Um, some of the things that they decided we needed to do, and we've been hopping around trying to accommodate these things since, is we have when we have a, a training, we can um, incorporate, we can do this as an inter-facility training, inter-departmental training, but we also have more departments that we are required to train now. And they, they train in different ways, so home health and hospice, for instance, they're required to do a training exercise now, but it's very different from what we're used to. They have, um, they have to check on staff, where are their staff, for instance, because they're not in the facility around people's homes. So depending on what the disaster is, um, they have different requirements too. So we've been, it, it's, it seemed like it wasn't that awful of a requirement what CMS has put into play, but each of those line items engenders quite a bit more activity on our part. Like I said, it's not bad activity, it's good, but you know, these are like unfunded mandates. <laughs> they come along with more requirements and no money for more people to do these. So another thing that the, con uh, that the CMS required was a continuity of operations plan. And what that is is essentially, what are your contingencies? What are you going to do if you have a complete loss of your building? You know, and, and we've been doing that for years, right? But did we have it in a plan? No. They're huge now this year on communications. What's your backup communications plans? We've always had redundant communications. Did we have them written down in a plan? No, we didn't. So that all is being put together. Believe it or not, I've been working on this for a year now, just putting the things that we're already doing into, into written form. So you see a lot of red in here. Those are things that are still being worked on and worked through. There is um, there is something in here that's not in here that we've worked on a lot, and that is the, um, what do we call it? Downtime procedures. So when our EHR goes down or when we have a power outage, that means that we cannot enter information for whatever reason, then we have now paper forms and we have to drill them. all the things that go in the continuity of operations plan we're now required to drill on those too so 
that burden alone has really, really ramped up. It's, it's, dare I say, almost impossible to to make all of these drills happen. But we do the best that we can. Um, the surveyors are actually asking to see the continuity of operations plan. Um, I sure got Charlie over in my office right away to see you know, what do we have in place for that. So he didn't know, but um, he knows now that we have been working on this for a while. We wanted me to make sure that you knew that we've been working on this for a while. It's a slow process, but we keep going. Um, the other thing that we've been working on and that's going in here is a succession plan. And succession is, um, I mean, you know what succession is, but it's essentially just naming <coughs> out the people for each department that will step up if, if Leslie here falls off the planet for five days and nobody knows where she is, then who's going to step in and direct those, you know, all the HR essential operations that we, you know, need to have people here on board doing things. So there's a succession plan. There's also something called the delegations of authority. And, you know, all these little mini inserts take a lot of time because you talk about a delegation of authority. What precipitates us having a delegation of authority. So if the payroll manager is not to be found for some reason, we had a big event, payroll manager is not to be found, or she's incapacitated, or she was affected by the event, and that's taken around the picture, then who is going to delegate those essential functions? Because that's an essential function to think our people. So um, we have to outline all of that. And that's really what this is about. I don't expect you to go through and read it or anything. Um, it's just be assured we are definitely working on it. If there's something that you think we should be paying more attention to, let me know. I'm always open to it. Meanwhile, it just, you know, the, this month is a big month for it's our, it's our annual exercise. So we do the full-blown exercise. And this has been more time consuming than others because we've had to do a lot more training and prepping for it. Um, so that's going to happen this month and then, then I'll get back to working on, just plugging away, working on the continuity of operations plan, inserting the communications plan, doing those things. Any questions? Where we are, what we're doing? Patty, I noticed in the orders of succession, sometimes you have, uh, like, health services coordinator, and some places you'll have an individual. How do you decide whether you're going to put an individual or... Good question. Because we often, so for instance, in our, in our incident command system, what we've done is we've tried to pre-populate the organization chart, because it's different than the hospital organization chart. So with that, we have taken positions and said, okay, um, my position is as a safety officer. And so instead of saying, it's Patty Newton, because what if I leave, um, it's been the risk manager, kind of goes in there. So we started doing that with the succession plans and, you know, it quickly got, we pretty much know who the department head is because, you know, the first up is going to be that department head. Um, but then you're going to name a successor and n nobody really knows who's the second in line, the third in line. So we actually found that we needed to have names for that. So I'm going to move that into an appendix because it's a flexible, dynamic document. So it can be updated easily. You. The advent of the fires, recent fires, has certainly <coughs> brought to attention. It isn't just like in uh, paradise, but essentially the hospital is closed and it's probably not going to be open. But then if you take the hospital and the cheaper, one of the big impacts there is paradise is where all the employees are being. Because Chico is so expensive to live in. Now they have even though they weren't in the fire, they have all the people that were their staff up again. They, they don't have a place to put They're trying to figure out housing for those people. Same thing holds true for the 
Reading area where we had big fires and the devastation. The impact that it has on the organizations. So I certainly got a lot of people, a lot of organizations very anxious about how to be planning for this. You know, there's also a um, there's information out there, good studies that have been made because Oregon's always trying to get ready for the big one. You know, it's going to happen. So there have been a lot of studies that have come out of all of that activity. And there is information that is credible. It says if you, if, as a community, if you're not resilient, if you don't come back within a matter of weeks, it can take a decade for your economic, for the whole economic health of the whole town, region, whatever, to recover. So that's a pretty serious hit. And that got people's attention, including CMS. <laughs> Um, there's been a lot of improvements in departments with training and recognition and, and different things, which is nice. But I feel I my I feel from the information that I've received over the last six months with the referral and it's called a seniority bonus now that the Pay Equity Act has been come into play January one. And the reason is that with the Pay Equity Act, it ties into seniority and experience with job descriptions and pay raises and all this kind of stuff. So. It, 
Anyway, the name has changed from a retention bonus to a seniority bonus, just because of the equity act. So, um, so traditionally, we've done a three-year bonus. You know, if someone has continuous employment, we say thank you, and and this goes for every single employee um, within the district. And then at five years, they receive a three thousand dollar bonus for continuous employment as a as a thank you for staying and giving us great service. And that went out to all the employees. So what this referral and seniority bonus has done has added an incentive to a lot of the frontline staff because it's significant enough at their wages to make an impact on their lives. When you know they hit 90 days, they receive a bonus. When they hit, well, when they first sign on, they receive a, a bonus. With 90 days, a bonus. Six months, a bonus. And then it's a year, another bonus. And so I think it's in giving smaller dollar incentives, but more recognition throughout that first year because the statistics show once somebody's been employed for a year, they generally tend to stay unless there's some major life event. Um, so we've added that. So I just want to quickly let you know kind of how it's worked. This bonus is for frontline staff because um, the, the professionals that come in receive other incentives. So this is for your front office receptionists, your admitting clerks, your billers, um, your qualified mental associates, uh, your first year right out of college qualified mental professionals. Those types of individuals are the ones that receive this um, sign-on bonus and seniority bonus. So in the last six months, they don't have to be referred to receive the bonus. They can just be hired because our intention is to remain fully staffed. So of the 47 individuals that we've hired within the last six months, nine were uh, referred by current employees, which is which is good. Um, we've got one employee that's that's a go-getter and has referred three people so far. She's waiting to see if the third one's going to get hired. <laughs> so when you have employees that are encouraging individuals to hire on and to stay with the organization, it's added, you know, sort of a soft incentive having somebody there to make sure you're getting what you need to stay. Um, so of those 47 that were hired, eight of them we hired as PRM. So you know that's as needed. Um, they're not a benefited position. So I pulled them out of the number. So we've hired 39 full-time individuals within the last six months that are just frontline staff. This, this is not including your nurses or your CNAs or your senior professionals. So out of those um, 39 frontline staff in the last six months, we have only had four terminations, which given our history and I don't have hard numbers for you, that is phenomenal. I mean, it, it's fabulous that we've only had four people separate. Um, one of them was to move back to Eugene with family and, and re-enter into the college program. Another was an MA that was termed, but th there was a lot involved in that, that termination and she was uh, tenured with us for seven weeks. And then her husband was working here as well, so they carpooled from Alturas and it just um, made it costly for them to only have one of them driving up here from Altura. So he, he resigned for that reason. Um, and then we had a caregiver in ALF that just clearly was not able to do the functions of the job you know, right off the bat, so they lasted two weeks. So it, it's nice to hear, well, it's refreshing. It's, it's a good thing to hear that um, it's not that people are unable to, um, you know, fit into work or do the essential functions of the job. This is this is quite a good number for for our frontline staff to have a 10% turnover um, rate for that six months. Now I don't have a comparison for you, but I, I can just tell you through experience it was much higher than that and I can work on getting you solid numbers if you'd like it. Um, so we've paid out to date uh, about $6,000. And if you remember I gave a little presentation on turnover and to replace one person Frontline staff can be anywhere from $5,000 to $7,500. So I, I believe, even though I don't have the hard, hard dollars for you because I don't have a comparison, I cannot give you. But I wanted to give you at least a little tickler of what's going on, and I can provide additional information as we move forward throughout the year. Um, all of this has to be done manually, so it's a little bit labor intensive. Um, so I wanted to present what has gone on with it in the last six months for you. So currently, we only have three full-time openings um, for our frontline staff, and that's in the entire organization for behavioral health, public, um, public health, um, DME, dietary, business office. So we're that's 
wonderful to hear that we are almost fully staffed. Um, and then we've obviously got those PRNs, not RNs and CNAs. Because, oh, Don, you're looking at me like, are you okay. crazy, Leslie? Yeah, <laughs> and I put it at the very bottom. The challenges are the RNs and, clarifying that. and the CNAs. You know, I wanted to let you know that's still a challenge that we're working on. Um, but I think, you know, with the added, um, having Mallory putting on the Facebook and putting it on our web page, um, she's advertised the bonus um, in the newspaper and on the web page as well. And then our management staff has tried to stay on top of really giving day-to-day -day input to those frontline employees. So there, the management staff has been much more attentive to giving training and having contact with those new employees coming in. So I like to say that it's just the program that I put together, <laughs> but it's, it's a really a conglomerate um, <clears throat> of the district as a whole, and, and I'm feeling very hopeful as we move forward that it will continue. So. Thanks for the update. Okay. Do you, any questions? Just extend that to the RNs and CNAs. Yeah, I know. I'm going to wave my magic wand. <laughs> the one I got for Christmas. <laughs> so, <laughs> no questions? No? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now, Mr. Craig. Okay. Uh, first thing is uh, January 21 is the date that we're planning on having the auditors here. Gerald, I know that that might be difficult to, we tried to make it as late in the afternoon, so we're shooting between three and five. We have a consensus. I tried to get it to be on the 22nd to accommodate your travel, yeah. but uh, it turns out he's got other commitments on the 22nd. Back at three. Okay, what so time did you say, Gerald? I told him I would tell him after tonight. So. Oh. Oh, no. so he, he can get here by, by 2 and whatever time works for you. You want to make it 4 or you want to make it 5 or you want to make it... Midnight? Uh, probably not. They were there at the disposal except for midnight. Missed and missed and missed and missed and you did the noodle poll back in December, uh -huh. um, but several of them had not. <laughs> Okay. But I had to track everybody down okay, and early in the week. The yeah, and so we I was trying to figure out a date and that's then Charlie had to get a hold of Eric. And so today oh. was when we finally got Eric's response. Okay, so what are we talking about? January twenty-first. That's a Monday, correct? It's yes. a Monday. I was just a little later. How about three o'clock? Can you make that? Yeah. Will three o'clock work? For everybody, we don't anticipate it be terribly long, but at that time we will try to have additional <coughs> information that uh, Cheryl was talking about, about some more specifics. And it'll be an opportunity for the auditors, like they did in March of last year, to. We we were promised to have financials preliminary to review today, but I think 21st is when we'll see. And so, uh, 3 o'clock is what we said? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. So, we'll uh, send out a reminder. Finally, after uh, lots of machinations, we got our certification to uh, use the Wellness Center. It's been approved by the fire department. Every marshal you can imagine. And uh, there are lots of agencies that needed to be involved. <clears throat> and we, have, we are now occupying, so we have four, actually it's five locations within the county. Two in Christmas Town, one at the, uh, at the annex of the county building, plus uh, we're uh, using space in North Lake's building. So that's in North Lake. In uh, Lakeview, we have a, a building that we purchased from uh, John Bogart's. That's now our main wellness center. And that's across from the library. Then we have what has been our wellness center. That's now the recovery center. And that is across from um, John Medico's office. And hopefully parking is a better, um, better managed situation. Just after a splash a few tires. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that Schwab is just down the street. So, <laughs> We want to keep the business local, so, uh, and then we have the uh, facility, the wellness center in the Marius building for uh, children and adolescents. So those are the locations that we are in. We are all approved in each of those facilities. So that's a big step forward. Uh, uh, it's Thursday, uh, Wednesday, was it yesterday? Or we had the OR uh, survey. I forget which tape it was. Uh, sorry, it was after, the, maybe it was Monday, after the uh, snowstorm. So um, the, the architect couldn't make it, the inspector did. We're virtually completed on that. That should be worth it. The clinic, we have uh, all authorizations for uh, occupying the space, and uh, all the staff have now moved in to both locations. They're using it. We're working on some bugs as we can anticipate. Remember, we have about a year for issues to be resolved under warranty. We will not start the parking space until the weather gets better. And that'll probably be in March or April, depending on what kind of winter we have. Uh, I will be meeting with and any of you are welcome to join us uh, Monday with the uh, Lakeview Disaster Unit and we'll be meeting in the Streamy Conference Room. That's correct. So that's down uh, in the old long-term care facility to talk about the design for the EMS facility. What our plan is uh, Daryl Anderson will be uh, managing that design process once we have a pretty clear definition of exactly how it's going to be um, located, which direction it's going to face, what the layout's going to be. We have a, a, enough information for him to design, give that uh, cost estimate, or give that design to a droid. They will then prepare actual, uh, not to exceed the cost uh, proposal contract, which we will bring to Right then, is that Monday evening? Mm -hmm. It is at noon. I know that four of the board members will be present. I don't know if anybody else, four of the uh, Lakeview Disaster Unit board members, and Daryl and one of his associates to try and do design, as you've seen done in the past, uh, the process to make sure that the size of the vehicles, the size of the, everything is taken into account. We come up with it. Point. That is what we talked about back in December, kind of November, if you recall. And so we don't have, we have a budget, but now we're going to come up with a specific not to exceed price. And the goal is we would start about the same time as the uh, construction of the parking space and finish before September. That's the target. Any questions about that? Venus, how I was on vacation for a week and a half. I have run out of things that I can tell you about. And we only had our. <laughs> <laughs> I know, thank you very much. Oh, how are you doing? One more often. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that. In case you guys haven't seen it, Melinda asked me to send an email out. I sent that this afternoon. She has another MA class going. And she has scholarship interviews January 11th, I believe, at the one in mm -hmm. Marisa. So if anybody can attend, she Melinda would. Melinda best? Melinda? Mm -hmm. Isn't she? Yes, but she is doing the class. I know. So she is. She, she actually had quite a few applicants <coughs> this time. Um, she was very, very excited with that one. So, but she says if the board doesn't come, then she'll just say hi, Cheryl. So. If you would like, I, <laughs> I can talk more about our grants, all the grants that we're working on. But I'll send this information to you so that you can read it at your leisure and you don't need time to talk. And I don't know, is there still a person in that book? No. no. I, I Season's see. over. Oh, is that right? Yep. Sorry. I don't know. Could have used this board meeting and 
few weeks back, but that's only a sorry. Do we have an executive session? Uh, we do have a <coughs> yes. Okay, any other comments? Okay, we'll uh, adjourn into executive session under ORS uh, 192660, bracket 2, bracket A personnel, bracket C, medical staff, and bracket E, legal. And Charlie, you get to say. Thank you.